Hey guys, this is Ash from Messenger Goddess. Um, I'm here today with a, an Eternal Idol Pacific uh, um, deck profile. So let's start things off. My starter is Remuda Triangle Cadet Shizuku. And she's basically the generic grade 3 searcher for Bermuda Triangle. Um, the reason I run her is because um, the other op your other option really is Weddle or Alk, and both of them just really aren't as useful. I mean, Weddle lets you bounce something, but unless you're bouncing Rio, you don't really make um, back even from that. Whereas this, at least you have a chance to break even with the effect. Um, or you can just keep it on as like a 4K booster, but I don't really recommend that. So, moving on to my trigger lineup, I'm running, of course, four heals. Um, you know, like I always say, you want to be able to sack when you can sack, so run the max amount of heals. It's four heals, then I run five draws. This is a cross ride build, and generally I like to run six six, but lately I've been kind of um, edging towards seven five, so this is kind of why there's five draws, and um, you know, the other trigger will be crits, of course, but. Uh, cross ride, you want to get your cross ride, or um, you want to get more card advantage in general. This deck isn't as offensive, in my opinion, as Labrador. You don't have those 21k double crit pushes every turn. So, a little bit of card advantage will help you in the long run. And I, I do recommend running six draws if you feel more comfortable with that. But I've been testing with five draws, and it really hasn't failed me yet. And then, finally, of course, like I mentioned, I'm running seven crits. Um, these are just my preferences in, in terms of art-wise for all these triggers. If you have a specific draw, like I would, if you really want the deck to be effective, uh, more effective, with more options, I'd run the Margo clone draw, but don't really like the art on that. And uh, you can even run the Drive Quartets, as you know, that might help you sometime during the game with extra boosters. But I run crits because um, I don't like draws in anything that's not Aqua Force. So um, yeah, you know crits like win games essentially. All right, so moving on to grade ones, I run four perfect shields. Like I always say the meta is how it is, and for the foreseeable future, you're going to be running four perfect shields, or you should run four perfect shields just to make sure you get one. Um, like I was talking about Labrador earlier, uh, if someone breaks right um, over revert with the Labrador, you want to be able to perfect shield that attack. Or it's going to be too much to guard, or you're going to lose the game, or just be so close to losing the game in general. So um, you want to be able to draw your perfect shields. And of course, I have one old art one in here. I have not got enough new ones to replace my old art one. Uh, but I do like the old art one more, just new symbol, uh, new deck, so kind of keep it consistent. Then I run. For Sednas. I like the new art a bit better than the old art. And they're your general 8k vanillas. What I like about this deck over Labrador is that you can run the 8k vanilla. Um, you can run more like combo or tech cards that aren't prisms because you aren't really lim limited to an archetype. And that's kind of what the good thing about some of the some of the non-archetype builds still are is that you have the option to run these things. Anyway, you know, she lets, um, she lets you hit 18 and uh, pretty easily, 21 behind uh, Crossword and Pacifica. And, yeah, she's just generally pretty good. Uh, you put two of her together, hit 16. So, then I run two clears. I'd run more, but I feel like the deck doesn't have enough space. Uh, but she's the bounce, when she's bounced back, plus 4K to something. Um, by Soul Blasting 1. She's a 7k booster, which makes her pretty good. But the problem with her is uh, you don't really have a lot of... Uh, your bounce engine in this deck really isn't that great. Um, I mean, Weddle would have been a bounce thing, but uh, I feel like there just isn't enough focus on bouncing to really do much with this. Um, but, yeah, most of the time she is a 7k vanilla. Then I run... For Pearl Sister Perlay, 
Um, I've been meaning to run the Pearl Sisters since they came out, and I just never found a build for me that really um, kind of you know clicked with them. But I'm really liking them in Eternal Idol, and um, they work pretty well. You know, their abilities are uh, the other one. I think is if it hits, you can draw a card. Uh, no, no, this one gives that ability. This one gives Perla the ability when it hits a Vanguard to Soul Blast one and draw a card. And the other one is should be Soul Charge one to send a card back. So you would send this back when it hits and um, let you keep doing the effect over and over. But because I run a maximum down to the other one, um, and this is a really good like either pressure engine um, and 16 columns in the deck. I like to run four of them just to get them the max amount of times I can. Um, moving on to the grade twos. I run three Prism Smiles, 10k vanilla. Um, I just didn't feel like putting aquas in here, but these can be aquas as well. And they're mainly for you to ride um, you know, 10k beater as well. Um, and I feel like this deck in general, kind of um, just because it's able to run Sednas, these are a bit more useful as you can now have 18k uh, attackers. Um, so it feels more anti cross ride than Prism. Though you could argue at the same time Prism gets the 12k attacker. So I don't know, I just feel like I've gotten. Um, I've done better versus cross rides with this deck. But that could just be, uh, you know, I just had better games with this deck versus cross ride than the other one. So, of course, I run for Pearl Sister Perla, and she, with. Prolays your big draw engine in this deck, uh, well pressure engine anyway. You don't really get the draw off that much, and you know she's pretty cool, pretty cute, and uh, 9k. You know that's with 7k, 16k, so she's at least going to swing for numbers versus in the break ride format. So I run four of her, then I run two Rios. These are only if I can get their effect working to get an extra draw and you know send them behind them. They're 16k, so. They're, they're pretty good. Um, when I was testing with Weddle, I would run more of them, but uh, I found right now the two is fine. Um, heck, you can take these two out for my next card. I run two Mermaid Idol Flutes. You can actually run four of these instead of two Rio, two Flutes, but I like to have more options, so I like to keep it 2-2. Two, two. Uh, you know, never know when I can get a Rio off, like uh, using Eternal Idol's effect and you know, be able to draw a few cards, um, a card. So, but this is the main target for Eternal Idol, and you would call her mainly because she's an 11k attacker, which hopefully if you have a full field and using Eternal Idol, um, she'll still be an 11k attacker, and she also is an interceptor. So she's pretty good. Um, not really much you can see about her, she's an 11k attacker. And then of course I run Four Pacificas. Uh, this cross ride build, you tend to want to get your cross ride. What is really fun about her is if you can get the um, Perla Perla thing off and you soul charge one of her and then you can just ride the cross ride. But I've had that happen maybe once in like 30 games, so it's not something to depend on. Um, otherwise, she's 13k. She'll attack for 13k. Let's you like shuffle back cards that you don't like and builds up your soul a bit. Uh, her Mega Blast also works on rear guard, but I've never gotten that off because I like to use Eternal Idol's ability. So that's that. And then of course I run four Eternal Idol Pacificas. Um, Star of the deck is the cross ride, kind of blast three on limit break. You can return up to two Bermuda Triangle cards to your hand and call one from your deck. Um, let you get in another attack or just something to put all your triggers on. Um, really, I feel like her counter blast cost is a bit too high, but uh, if it wasn't three, you wouldn't really use aura. So uh, there'd be no reason to use aura if her it was a counter blast too. But other than her ability being cost is too high, 13k body is still pretty relevant, and uh, you know she's just pretty good. Uh, generally, what you would do anyway, uh, so let's say this is your field for some reason.
So you have the effect of this off, right? And so you swing with this, you would, to use your ability, you would swing with this column first, 15 or whatever, doesn't matter if it hits, maybe attack a rear guard even. And then you swing with this, and let's say it's cross written. So you're swinging for 17. And for some reason you still have that in the field. So 17, then you would use her ability, count plus 3, return Rio and clear to your deck. Um, her ability resolves first before you can do anything else, so call this out, then activate Rio, kind of blast, so we'll charge, draw a card, so this goes back to your hand, this, so blast, and clearly goes back to your hand, plus 4k here, here. Um, so then you would check for triggers, of course. And you could put either your triggers on any of these, and that's you know generally uh, how you would try to push your game in Pacifica. Probably can only work once uh, because let's say you use Rio, then you're without enough heal triggers, you're not going to get this off again. And uh, you should hope to try to get this off twice anyway, which is why I add Rio because I don't want to like oh yeah if I hit a heal I get this off twice. No, I'd rather just get a guaranteed draw by getting it off once. Or sometimes I'll even do this, double reel, if I somehow got it, and just so I can draw twice. Assuming I'm at five damage, of course. Um, of course, in that situation, I wouldn't have used this. And uh, you can even bounce this back for a 10k shield if you want. But, um, yeah, you know, Eternal Idol, I think it's a pretty fun build. I'm actually kind of liking it a bit, a bit more than Prism, though I'll have to say that Prism is more competitive. Though, for some reason, this build of mine beats Prism builds. I don't know why. But, uh, I beat Prism builds with this deck, and Prism builds beat other builds that this deck can't beat. So, take that how you will. Anyway, this has been Ash from Imagine Your Goddess, and thanks for watching. See you guys next time. Mm -hmm.